Hi everybody, everybody I'm back. Everybody Tina Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. The holidays are right around the corner and you all are looking for that perfect dish to put on your dinner table. Well, listen here, you are in for a treat because Dina Young is gonna show you how to make an amazing brown sugar glazed ham. This is the ham that I like to make every Christmas. Sometimes I make this ham for New Year's as well. It's so flavorful, listen here. It does not require a lot of ingredients and if, and if you're making a Gina Young style, it's gonna be so tasty. Here's what you'll need to make Gina Young style brown sugar glazed ham. You all never had, you all never had my brown sugar glazed ham. You better make you some. And here is Prince and Polo. You all ask for them on a daily basis. Polo is to the right and Prince is over on the left. Prince is getting ready to fall asleep. I just wanted to chime in and show you all what Prince and Polo are up to today. Anytime I get in this kitchen, they like to sit here and watch me and hope and pray that I drop some goodies on the floor for them. <laughs> Say hi, Prince and Polo. Okay, everyone, here are the lovely ingredients you will need. You're gonna need a ham. This ham here is a Sugardale ham, and the ham, I love to purchase Sugardale ham. I like Sugardale bacon, and I love their ham. I find that this is an amazing ham, and it's not really salty. If there's one thing that I cannot stand is to purchase a ham that's really, really salty. This one right here is just perfect, and it turns out nice and juicy every time I make it. So I have this Sugardale ham here, and it does have just a little bone, you know, right here. Now, <clears throat> something very, very, very interesting. You're gonna need some ginger snap cookies. Oh my goodness. Ginger snap cookies are made with ginger and molasses. This is gonna give an amazing, I'll just show you as we go. <laughs> I'll just show you as we go. You're gonna need some honey. Okay, you will need toothpicks. You will need some brown sugar. And we're going to use marshino cherries. I've drained the marshino cherries. You're gonna need some butter and I'm gonna use a Kerrygold butter. This is salted butter. It's okay if you use salted or unsalted, would be just fine. You're gonna need some pineapple slices, okay? So I have two cans of pineapple slices. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna use both cans, but whatever I don't use, I'll literally eat the rest of the pineapples tonight, trust me on that. And then I have some honey mustard, okay? You can use Dijon mustard, you can use regular mustard if you like, or you don't have to use the mustard at all, okay? So the first thing that I want to do, <clears throat> Over here, you can see that I have my food processor. What I wanna do is I want to take some of my ginger snap cookies, just like so, and I'm going to put a cup's worth, around about a cup's worth, and really I'm just gonna eyeball it, okay? That's a little bit over a cup, but I'm happy with that. <laughs> okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna pulsate this, until it turns into really fine crumbs. Okay, so we'll do that. It does make some noise. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this to turn into like sand-like um, texture, so I want it ground up very well. I'm gonna continue to grind this up and then I'll be right back. So right here you can see that I've turned the ginger snap cookies into fine crumbs. Okay, now if you don't have a food processor, it's okay, don't worry about that. You can take a Ziploc bag 
put your cookies into a Ziploc bag and just bang them out until they become nice and crushed. Or you can use a rolling pin and just roll them out until they crush, okay? So you do not have to have one of these. I hope you all are having an amazing day today. I hope you all are having a great work week as well. Okay, everybody, so I have to tell you this really quick before we get started. It's something that is so funny and it really made me laugh so hard inside. So what I like to do from time to time is once I get all of my ingredients lined up on my island, you know, like, like today, I had my ham out, my pineapples, my ginger snap cookies and everything laid out, what I like to do is I ask my husband, I say like, okay, so here's all the ingredients. What do you think that I'm making today? Now, remind you, he can't cook, but he, he, he can make a great breakfast. He can make a great breakfast. But as far as cooking, that's what he's got me for. So I asked him, I said, okay, here's the ingredients. What do you think I'm making? And he takes one look at the ginger snap cookies and, he sa and he's like so for sure about this, right? He says, oh! I know what you're making. I said, what? And I just knew he was going to be right. And the ham is sitting right there. He says, you're making gingerbread cookies. <laughs> and I thought, that, that one right there, that one was funny. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. That was just so funny. So make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started. Now, we have one side here that doesn't have much fat at the bottom but the top has just a little bit of fat and really it's not enough fat to really cut off this is so little bit of fat that it will render off itself and what i mean by render is once this hits that hot heat in the oven the oven will sort of melt that beautiful fat okay and, and give you an amazing juicy ham so what we're going to do you want to take a sharp knife and you want to somewhat be very careful okay you don't want to cut your digits off okay you're going to need your digits so you can cook what you want to do is you want to slice down into your ham and i'm not going far in i'm just kind of scoring the outside of this fat okay and i'm going to go in a crisscross motion you can go in an x motion however you would like to do so we can make a beautiful pattern and it also helps to get your glaze kind of down in there if you understand what i'm saying you all know what i'm talking about okay so you go far in enough but not too far okay so i'm putting the score marks in and i'm going all the way across okay let me get down in there if i feel like some of them aren't deep enough I'm just going to go in, make it just a little tiny bit deeper. Okay? Beautiful. Now that we have that part done, next what we're going to do is we're going to turn it in this manner. And you want to get marks going this way as well. Okay? Pretty simple, right? I'm going to continue to do the rest of the ham, and I'll be right back. This part right here is so simple. To make, I'll just do it on camera. To make this ham is a piece of cake. It's not hard. Every recipe and everything that I do in this kitchen, you all can do as well. You better believe you can. You better believe you can, and guess what? It's gonna turn out exactly as mine's would. Okay, so now that we've scored, our beautiful ham. Let's make our way over to the stove. I want to show you how to make this beautiful glaze. But before we do that, I want to put my ham into a pan. We want to put a little bit of water in our pan and cover this so we can start the cooking process. Some people like to put their glaze on now. I'm not that person. I don't want to put my glaze on now. I put my glaze on a little later. Okay, since this is a fully cooked ham, you just want to heat it thoroughly through. Okay, but let's get it start to cooking. 
Okay, so here's my pan that I decided to use. I love to use this pan in the oven. I'm going to put just some regular water into our pan. And that water helps to steam, you know, help the cooking process of our ham. Now I'm going to put a little bit of Maggi Pollo. If you don't have Maggi Pollo, you can use a chicken bouillon cube, okay? Or just put you, um, just a little bit of Maggi Pollo in there. I find it gives an amazing flavor, okay? Beautiful. Not too much. Don't get crazy with it. I'm going to cover this with foil. This goes in the oven, 350 degrees for a half an hour. After a half an hour, we're going to do our first glaze, but I'm going to have to show you how to make the glaze first. So let's get this covered, put it on the middle rack, 350 for a half an hour. Make sure that you preheat your oven. Okay, so let's get started on our beautiful glaze. I do have a Band-Aid on. The reason for the Band-Aid is because when I went to grab my aluminum foil, the thing that you cut the foil off with, you know, the, the sharp thing that you cut the foil off with, cut my finger. So I washed my hands. I put a Band-Aid on and washed my hands once again. We're going to use a little over a half stick of butter. Okay? Just go a little over that half stick in this manner. And now it's time to make our glaze. One cup of brown sugar. And then we're going to use a half a cup. You can use more of the ginger snaps if you like than the half a cup. It's up to your discretion. You see how much I'm putting in. Ginger snap powder. That right there is what's going to set this ham off. And your family members are going to say, wait. Like their taste buds are going to be like, wait, 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 wait. What am I tasting? And then they're going to say, oh my goodness. What did you put on this ham? And you're going to say, Jeannie Young showed me how. Go check her out. Okay, so we're just going to wait until this gets nice and melted down. You can put some cinnamon in here if you like. But honestly, I feel like when I'm using the ginger snap powder, you don't need nutmeg, you don't need brown sugar, okay? You don't need allspice because all of the spices that I normally would use for my brown sugar glaze um, is in with the ginger snaps, okay? So we're gonna let this get nice and melty. Be right back. You don't have to wait to put your honey in. Let's go ahead and get that honey in right now, okay? I typically like to use a third cup, okay? Just like so in this manner. So at this point, this has been cooking for around about two minutes. You can see that it's starting to melt down. And be careful with this because this can turn into like hot lava. It's really hot, you know. So be careful. You don't want to get this stuck onto your finger because you won't be happy. Okay, so now that it's melted down, and it's not completely melted, but I will go ahead and turn the heat off now, okay? The, the butter will continue to melt because the mixture is nice and hot, okay? Now, we're going to just set this aside. We're going to take it off of the burner, and I don't want you to worry if um, when you go to stir this, it's thickened up. Don't worry about that. And the reason why is because once it hits that oven, it'll thin back out, okay? And if yours is too thick for some reason, don't freak out. Just put you a little bit of the pineapple juice in this. And when I say a little bit, just a little bit, okay? And if you don't wanna use the pineapple juice, you can put a little bit more butter and it will thin out, okay? This is what it's supposed to look like. Oh my word, you have a glaze. Your family members will absolutely adore. Take it off the burner. We're gonna check on our ham here in about 20 minutes, that will be a half an hour, and we're gonna paint this beautiful glaze onto our ham, and I'll show you something else we're gonna do with the ham. Okay, everyone, so our ham has cooked 
for half an hour. Just a little bit of honey mustard is all you're gonna need. Just a little bit, get it down in those crevices in this manner. Th believe it or not, this honey mustard is gonna give an amazing flavor and it helps to hold your um, glaze on, okay? That little bit goes a long way, okay? I'm gonna spread a little bit this way and I've poured off some of that broth. I just left a little bit of the broth down in the bottom, okay? Beautiful, get that down in those crevices in this manner. And you can see where it's starting to open up a lot. That's what you're wanting to see. Now, and my glaze did exactly what I thought it would do. It got a little thick, so I put some pineapple juice in and I put a little bit extra butter in, okay? Now look at this. Look at me, baby. <laughs> oh, look at me, baby. Look at that, get it all down in those crevices, okay? If you don't have a brush, you know, as I do, it's okay, just use a spoon, okay? Now we're gonna baste this two to three times. Sometimes I do two, sometimes I do three. All depends on how I feel and what I think I need, okay? So just put this glaze, get down on the sides, just like so, get down in those crevices just like this. Get those beautiful spices all into this amazing ham. Now, I'm gonna turn it this way, okay? And I want some of this beautiful glaze to drizzle all down the front. Mm. Sometimes I buy the ham that, are, that is already spiraled and cut for me. But today I didn't want to do that ham for this demonstration. I want to cut my own slices. You know, if I want it nice and thick, I'll be able to cut it thick. And if you want thin slices, cut yours thin. Okay, just like this. Let's get this back into the oven for another 35 minutes on 350. After 35 minutes, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna baste this bad boy once again. And then if you're not happy with how much glaze you have, you can baste it again, okay? Going in the oven on the middle rack, 350 degrees. Make sure you do not cover it. You only cover it one time, which is in the beginning when we had nothing on the ham. Because you want for that glaze to start to char up a little bit. I was going to show you all how to put the pineapples on after this first glaze, but let's go ahead and get it done and out the way now, okay? So you wanna put your pineapple onto your ham. You put it where you would like to present it, make it nice and beautiful, and then we are going to take the toothpicks and put them on there so they'll stay on. Otherwise, they'll just kind of slide off, okay? So now let's take a few clean toothpicks, and you want to put it down in here. You wanna make sure that you don't break off your um, toothpicks. That wouldn't be a good thing. After this is done, you want to take the toothpicks out, okay? And the, t the uh, pineapples will stay on for you. You better believe they will, okay? Because that glaze, will help them to stick onto this beautiful ham. Now you can put pineapples all throughout here. Put as many as you'd like to have. You can put pineapples on the uh, front side if you'd like as well. I'm not gonna put any pineapples on the front, okay? But you can if you'd like, okay? So now that I have the des desired amount, of pineapples on it's nice and beautiful put you some maraschino cherries in these ones are huge right look at that just get them on there just like so in this manner and then you can take a toothpick do the same thing to put your beautiful cherries inside of the pineapple so they will stay now, a lot of people like to take, and you can do the same thing, and I've done it before. You can take that cherry juice and put it in with your brown sugar, your butter mixture, 
and your um, your cookie mixture. Okay, so my sauce did get a little bit thick and I um, used some pineapple juice and some more butter. I think I maybe got a little carried away with my cookies, but I purposely love to do that because it makes it taste absolutely amazing. So I highly suggest that you use some pineapple juice in yours, okay? In your uh, glaze and a little bit extra butter, okay? How much extra butter? Just put that whole other half stick in, okay? All right, now, this is beautiful. Get this bad boy into the oven. We're gonna check on it in a half an hour and we'll see what our glaze is looking like. Look at this, guys. Prince and Polo being bad. Look what they've done to their, look what they've done to their couch. This is what they do. <laughs> They've pulled their two couches apart. They threw their blankets everywhere. We're gonna look at them for a few minutes. Watch them. Prince and Polo being bad. Polo sneaking off the couch. He thinks that I don't see him. I've already told him both to sit down. Okay, everyone, we're going to put our second glaze on. Another half an hour has went by. It looks like we might have to do three glaze sessions. And I'm just going to go. And, you know, honestly, you can put the glaze on the pineapples if you like. No issues there. I'm just going to paint it onto and get it down in those crevices just like this in this manner. It's going to get beautiful and golden brown. Look what we got going on over here. Look, at the, look, look, look. See that? See that, guys? They are showing out. They don't even know that I'm recording them. <laughs> Prince and Polo cam today. <laughs> I'm telling on them today. I am telling on those babies today. <laughs> okay, this is going back into the oven for another half an hour. Voila, here is our beautiful ham. Listen here, if you all, if you all enjoyed this video right here, give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time, every time Jeannie Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends everything you know about Jeannie Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Let's say a prayer. Let's cut down into this. We're going to give it a try. I'm going to let you all know what this tastes like. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. We thank you for your blessings. We pray that no weapons formed against us shall prosper. We bind the devil away from our lives in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, peace, and joy that you bring us daily. Amen. All right, let's cut down to this. Now, the good thing that I did was I let this ham set for a half an hour. A half an hour, you have to let the meat set because you don't want to slice down into it and all those beautiful juices that you work so hard for comes running out. Let the meat set for a while before you cut down into it. Now I'm just going to find that perfect spot. We're going to cut down into this bad boy. We're going to give it a taste. Amen to my beautiful prayer. Look at this. I'm going to put that pineapple right up there. Hooey, look at this. Mm, mm, mm. We're going to slice down into this. All right. I got a nice sharp knife. Hooey. Oh, mommy. <laughs> Ooh, and it's going to be nice and juicy. Mm. Now, sometimes you can get a ham that is really, really, really has that 
See that charred look right there? I didn't want to overcook my ham. I love that, that look right there, okay, that I've got in some places, but I didn't want to overcook my ham. You want your ham to be nice and juicy. It's glazed and full of flavor. Oh, oh, would you look at, look, <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see, look at this. Look at this beautifulness. Look, here's what I want you to see. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I want you to see just how beautiful and juicy that is. Oh, give that a try right there and let me know what you all think about this. Oh, can I get a good picture? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. There's a good picture. Taste this. Let me know what you think. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, mm hmm. Mmm, mmm. Oh, mommy. Mm. This is so delicious. This is so beautiful. I'm going to bring my camera down. Let's see. I'm going to bring that camera down so y'all can see what I see. Can you all see just how beautiful and juicy this is in the inside? Oh, my goodness. Let's take another bite. Oh, look at that ham. It's beauty. Make this for your holiday, your family members will love you for it. Let's slice some more of that ham. Couple more pieces. Look at this. Oh, and it just cuts like butter. My goodness, it, ooh. Ooh, I'm taking that whole piece right there. Look at this. Look at this, look at this. And as always, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching. Good night, but not before you take another bite of this beautiful ham. God bless each and every one of you. Mm.